Hello, this is BioEnchanted, and welcome to my newest Let's Play. This is a game that I quite enjoyed playing when I played through it, although it did get kind of overwhelming towards the end, so I did need to start using cheats on my initial playthrough. I will be trying to avoid doing that this time, but I will make no promises. If I need to start using uh, an infinite health code towards the end, I will do. Because while this game is rather fun, it also gets very difficult towards the end because of enemy placements and things like that, and of somewhat obnoxious boss designs. The game in question is, of course, Ghost Hunter on the PS2. This is a game that I quite like, partially due to the writing and the voice acting, alongside the gameplay being pretty good. Uh, because it's actually got some very special things in the cast that I quite enjoy that we'll get into as we arrive at those parts of the game. I quite like uh, this splash screen because it gives you a good example of the enemy designs we'll be seeing, even if it's only a very brief one. There is a small cut here uh, on the menu because when I first tried to uh, start this on recording, I forgot to turn the subtitles on, and the voice acting in this game is quite quiet. So we'll be leaving f subtitles on throughout the entire thing. There are thousands of ghost stories, tales of suffering, loss, and rejection. Into a few. There's nobody to shoot. There's you. Exactly. I mean, a bunch of shadows. Hey, keep the gun away. So what is this place? Read the sign. Yeah, what I meant was... What I meant was, what are we... I know what you meant. She likes me. No doubt about it, she likes me. Montse High? <laughs> Two years ago. The Detroit school murders? Made the Nationals. You probably didn't get it in the Kalamazoo Gazette. Night of a school play here. Some Professor Brooke murders ten students and then scoots. Wow. Was there an arrest? No. He vanished. No weapon ever found. No motive. All investigation ran dry six months in. Cause of death? Never established. Autopsies drew a blank. Not a mark on any of the bodies. Yeah. Boy, they say it was a weird scene to walk into that night. Detroit PD took quite a mulling over it, so we respond to every crank call. The gun solved like this sure draws the freaks out of the woodwork. Makes even your average Joe skittish. Uh-huh. 
So, <clears throat> so we've had a call? Calls. Demolition crew with overactive imaginations. Hearing voices, scared of their own reflections. Anyway, let's just get it over with. I'll do the top floors, you do the basement. Cursory check, meet back here in 30. Got it. Oh, hey. Hey, this better not be scare the little old country boy night. Okay, I bet you got a welcoming committee, guys from Division down in the basement wearing Halloween masks, a body fresh off the slab, swinging from the rafters. <laughs> you think you're worth that kind of effort? Uh, yeah, pretty much. I look like a prankster? <sighs> Go to work. 30. Okay, 30 it is, partner. I look like a prankster. <laughs> First time I'd get stuck with one of Charlie's Angels. Jane Bond. Great. <laughs> And here's the gameplay proper. You may have noticed that the main character, whose name is Lazarus Jones, and is voiced by Rob Paulson from the Animaniacs, along with a variety of other things, but his... The most famous thing I know him in was Animaniacs. Uh, Lazarus Jones is perhaps one of the worst people in the world. He's a terrible man. His personality leaves a lot to be desired. This is just a kind of brief look at the menu so you can see how it works and how it looks. There's just the different segments and everything like that. The gameplay of this game can get a little awkward. That's because of a mechanic that I didn't work out until about halfway through this video with why sometimes the aiming goes really wonky and sometimes it's not. Turns out there's actually what happens when you tap the L2 button is when you're in hunting mode it takes things from this view which is the standard aiming mode to a free aiming mode called advanced aiming mode which I never intentionally use because it's garbage. One thing I do like with this game is it actually manages to build some kind of an atmosphere despite its goofy overtones. For example with the mysterious voices we're hearing in the background now. No way through. Generally, one of the main strengths of this game is the voice acting to round things out. Uh, his assistant, uh, Anna Steele, his partner, is voiced by Man McNamara. McNamara, rather. <laughs> Who I haven't heard of myself, but according to IMDb, she's on the Gears of War series quite a lot. I quite like this framing here of this room because it really draws your attention to it because it's much brighter and the camera just kind of snaps to it briefly. Down here, I guess. You may have noticed this game has a checkpointing system for saving, but we still need to manually save when we actually want to make a permanent save. One thing I like with this game is the soundtrack. It's does a good job building the atmosphere while also feeling very B-movie, like this particular song here. It's a simple club progression, but an effective one. I quite like this room with the cloth, because while it doesn't really serve much of a purpose, the cloth waving in the non-existent breeze gives it some kind of uh, an atmosphere to it. And here's one of the main mechanics of the game, is uh, you can clamber down things where they don't have ladders. What is this place? I don't know, but it seems fairly ominous. Yes, very well done there, Lazarus. Scratch your ass with your gun, that can't possibly go wrong. Quite like that it draws your attention to the big machine in the middle. It's a very clever bit of layout.
down. All systems offline running at zero percent. All communication will terminate in T minus five. Initiate backup power. Urgent. Initiate backup power. That AI is actually my second favourite character in this game, for reasons that will only become apparent later in this video, and much later in the game. But he is really cool, I like him a lot. Despite being just an AI, he has a lot of personality that we will see. This is the main case file screen, which we will see eventually when we actually start collecting case files to fill in the gaps of what's actually happening in this plot. Let's retreat to the sewers and see what we can find, now that we've fucked everything up. What the hell's going on? You not just... What have you done down here? Well, I found something. A machine. Well, it exploded. I... I just... Oh, great. I fell and I hit my head. I, I, I don't know. I... There, there must have been some sort of a, a gas or something. It's... What are you talking about? Lazarus? Are you okay? Of course. Yeah. Just... Just wish I knew what happened. Okay, so so you left me and then went down to the base. Don't move. What are you doing? I said don't move. You may have guessed from the elaborate design of that character that he is going to be our primary villain throughout this game. His name and voice act will go into when it becomes relevant. Here's our first case note describing the incident in question with uh, the uh, Professor Brook allegedly murdering eight students and then disappearing. I'll be giving these kind of a brief kind of a scroll through where you can pause the video if you want to actually read them properly. So let's go to this elevator shaft and see what we can find. Apparently we're trying to initiate the backup power, although Lazarus has no idea why. So let's figure out how to do that. I like that shot of all the released ghosts just kind of flying past you while you're helpless on the ladder. It's a pretty effective scene. Initiate the yeah, this game has quite a bit of a Dutch angle situation going on. It's trying to be spooky. Sometimes it can get kind of seasick at times. Here's our first real enemy of the game, although it's behind the cage so it can't really hurt us, it's more of a preview. This is kind of a puzzle. We need to shoot this guy until he bridges the gap in the electricity with his own body. So let's move on now that we've done that and actually brought up the backup power properly. You may have noticed that was a somewhat looser aiming situation that I believe we were in free aim there, which is... You can see why I hate that aiming system, it's terrible for actual combat. I mean, it's probably going to be useful for later game enemies that have specific places you have to shoot them, but even then, it's disorienting as fuck. Scanning. Intruder. Male. Caucasian. 
Super normal sight. Suitable candidate. Listen, this, uh, this machine, it, 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 it released something, a drug, or a, a gas. I, I, I was knocked down, and I know I'm seeing things. I, I just... And now I'm talking to a box. Jesus! Strategy for candidate. Capture the dead. Correction. Recapture the dead. No gas, no drugs. Ghosts. Ghosts? What are you talking about? A candidate? Hey! Hey! Can you hear me? Estimate, you can be heard in Texas. Advise composure. Initiating training. Recapture ghosts. Training essential. Training? What? Where's my partner? What have you done with her? No information. Recapture ghosts. Generate essential power. Costs none. Benefits. Spectral gateways opened. Woman found. Initiate training. Initiate no, training. No, no, that's Initiate it. That's it. I'm out of here. I've already had a small glimpse of why I love this AI. Lines like that, like, Estimate, you can be heard in Texas. <laughs> he has a lot of lines like that that are just kind of charming. He's just kind of... Almost like he's taking the piss out of traditional AI things. Quite like this room because it's kind of... it was When I first played the demo on, uh, years ago, it's actually kind of got me a little bit. <laughs> it's a cute little jump scare. And here's the first major weapon of the game, the Pulse Rifle. Ghost Angel will be explained shortly. And the grenades. We'll learn about those in due time. Hey, come on, what are you doing? Open the door! Initiating basic training sequence. Welcome. Alright, look. I'm gonna count to five, and then... Concur candidates enumerating strategy. Time is of the essence. Please listen. Your hunting must begin as soon as possible. One. In brief, your weapons are useless. You cannot kill that which does not live. However, you can contain the spirit. Two. The grenade has two functions. Firstly, it will anchor the spirit into the realm of the living, allowing you to weaken it. Three. And second. Four. The grenade will capture a weakened ghost, trapping it in the array. Five. Recognized nine millimeter firearm. Recognized threatening stance towards a digital entity, an ally. Irrational response. Kennedy functioning with excessive nervous energy. Excessive nervous energy now justified. Strategy hunt this ghost. That's one of my favorite lines from him, I think, actually. Uh, because of the synergy, now justify. Yeah, this is the free aim. It is a nightmare to control because the camera does not move with it. So you can often lose track of where you are in relation to it. Which is a pain when the monster is right in the middle of the screen. Because it feels really sluggish. I think it's around here that I work out, or maybe a bit later, exactly why it's being so weird. But this is definitely an aiming system I'm just not a fan of. I always prefer the anchor aim to the free aim. This is just me looking around the room properly to see the, like, show off the water in the little tank down the middle, and then this uh, bit of foreshadowing on the wall here, including a, a picture of our primary villain. we have our second enemy. This is this enemy type is called the Revenant. They are basically ghost energy made flesh. They are enormous, they are durable, but they are also slow and lumbering, which is an advantage for us. Now the gun things mentioned ghost energy, we'll be dealing with that a little bit later, it's not really relevant yet. But uh, the grenades actually serve a purpose, even on enemies that it doesn't necessarily work on. Which is that uh, when, you when it attaches to an enemy, uh, you will notice these blue and red orbs attaching to it, which are ghost energy that are coming from when you weaken the ghost spectral form, that, which you restore your health and ammo, respectively. We got this rifle in it. And that has just dared to be generally creepy. It's just kind of ridiculous that. 
But yeah, we're not going to bother going up there because the stairs are out entirely. So, let's move on. The secondary use the ghost energy has is that uh, it can... Uh, with the uh, grenades, it can actually retrieve it from afar. So if the ghost energy is like, all the way across the room, you just toss a grenade at it and it brings it straight to you. This is just me checking out what the bathroom stalls actually did, because I never really bothered really looking into them much. You can't really do anything with them, and the toilet falling off the wall is the closest thing that really has to anything happening in it. So this will be an improvement. Here is our second enemy type, the blue spook. The most numerous enemy type and the most annoying enemy type because they move really quickly and fire at you from afar. And with the free aim, as you can see, aiming at them is a bloody nightmare. But yeah, those orbs are what I meant by the ghost energy and the health energy. The health didn't come because we don't need it. So that only it only attaches to the grenade if we actually need it. This safe is just a red herring, even though it looks like something you could interact with, it's just nothing. So let's escape instead. Now this part's kind of mean because in this version of the game, the original version, there is no dialogue here to tell you this exists. But in the re-releases of the game on, I believe, the American version, uh, it actually says that there is a shotgun in the trunk of the car to pick up. The actual first original version of the game, though, doesn't actually mention that, so that is actually completely missable. Not sure if permanently, I don't know if you can actually get back here on later visits to the school, which the school is our main hub. But uh, it's kind of mean to kind of hide the shotgun, because it's incredibly useful for this part of the game, when we, for reasons we'll see when we get to a particular room. So let's climb this ladder into this already broken window and see what we can find on the upper floors of the school. Oh, another one of these little guys. This is me being stupid with the grenade bit, forgetting how to actually aim the thing. There we go. This is kind of BS, because I could have sworn that the grenade had latched enough that it had, so... Yeah, the blue and red meters can be a little confusing. I don't quite get them myself. I just realised that one had only just spawned in. That no, was me misreading it when I was actually playing it. I wasn't sure what happened there. I thought it had just somehow not died. But yeah, it's going to drop the pretense of actually spawning them from little girls fairly quickly. Uh, it only really does it in this part of the game. Afterwards, the blue spooks will just start showing up on their own. I guess they've just given up trying to trick you. What was that? Bottle, an unnatural incarceration, a 
chance for fury to fester. Do not struggle. All I am doing is thanking you. I can grant you every little sordid wish, as long as you give me one thing. What thing? This is what I wanted to hold up on actually talking about the main villain because I wanted you to hear him first because he is actually voiced by Sir Michael Gambon. Yes, Dumbledore from Harry Potter is our main villain here. And he is amazing. Uh, I just love the, his delivery on a lot of those lines like the whole I'm a genie trapped for too long inside a rancid bottles. Like the way he says things like that. It's like you can really hear the resentment in his voice at what he's been through. His name is Lord Hawksmoor. Yeah, he's got like a really good performance throughout the game. He's just a pleasure to listen to. And I really enjoy uh, his role in the game in general. They, him and the AI have the strongest personalities and their personalities I quite like. And there's a pretty cool little spooky picture of him. I'm sure he's probably based on something. I've seen similarly spooky pictures and other things. Don't know what's going on there. It's like he's biting his own face. But there you go. And there's a somewhat hokey picture of him screaming at the camera. Just me confirming I was in full health. I think this is where I should realise the L2 thing. Yeah, this is me turning it on and then turning it off again. Now that I know that, that's going to make this much easier to control as the game goes on. In here, these green canisters, as you can probably guess from the fact that they look like everything like this in every game ever made, are the shotgun shells. Nice that the game to give us a little extra ammo for a weapon we haven't used yet, but we will be using soon. I don't know why that post is in a school, but there you go. <laughs> Seems a little inappropriate. But yeah, these, there's a couple of blue spooks in here to deal with now. Now that the game's actually started, hopefully. And the stairs will unblock now as well, which is very handy of the game to have done so. Yeah, as you can guess, the school will be unlocking throughout the game as we explore the uh, game and learn new abilities and get new uh, weapons and things that we can use to do things. Because some of the doors that were boarded up were very conspicuously kind of Scooby-Doo style this will animate later situations. So let's climb the stairs. Just keeping the good out just to make sure there's no more blue spooks up here but I don't believe there are. As you can see, these are fairly obviously textures, but then these doors are actually glowing, so you can no tell we're going to be doing something with them later. This is me confirming the objective screen, because often the game doesn't actually tell you what it's expecting you to do next, because it's often fairly obvious, but this is just me showing off that if you can get if you get stuck on a puzzle, it tells you what to do there. And this is a case now that automatically opens itself on the uh, ghost that entered Lazarus's body at the beginning of the game, known as Kay. Yeah, she has the ability to use any ability that she uh, steals off another ghost. She is basically a Metroid character. So let's investigate this big, weird glowing. However, I recommend that all due caution should be taken naturally. If my message should end, it means that the power has come to an end, and all things will be shut off automatically. Astral form? What are you talking about? You 
you've just come out from inside me. You're a ghost? Look, I'm sorry, I just don't understand. But you can hear me, right? Okay, well... Hi! Well, look, it's not exactly easy knowing what to say, but you know, it's, uh... Well, it's been good to have you aboard. Fine, you go ahead and laugh, Astral. Just remember, I never exactly invited you inside me, okay? That was your thing, not mine. So anyway, feel free to just stay out and about, okay? I mean, people need their space, don't they? What? I don't understand. Jesus, don't just point at him. How was I supposed to know? How did he miss that? Lazarus is probably one of the biggest idiots I've ever seen. Personally, anyway. In games, of course. Yeah, this can be a problem with Revenants. When you get stuck in their abs like this, it can be a bit of a pain to get somewhere a bit more beneficial. And for some reason, this guy I'm having a lot of trouble actually, like, killing. Like, actually hitting enough and stuff. I don't know exactly why. It just seems to be I'm getting a lot more trouble than usual from this guy. But yeah, now Astral has the ability to channel the Revenant's power. So now we'll summon her and actually solve the puzzle involving being down the elevator. Astral is a very different character controlling her to Isaac because... Isaac? <laughs> Lazarus. Because she can uh, float and also being a ghost she has no real powers of her own when it comes to attacking things. So she tends to be ignored by the enemies because she is a fellow ghost so they kind of just see her as one of their own. She can't open doors or pass through solid objects but what she can do is she can... We're just ignoring this tutorial text because they're just kind of redundant in another way here. But this is what we're actually meant to do here. Use the Revenant power to slam down this elevator because that allows her to actually put on weight and interact with physical things in the physical world. So now the elevator's down, Lazarus can make his way up. Yeah, that was a weird little trip onto the ladder there, but there we go. This room is where we'll start using the shotgun, because this room can be... Well, when I first recorded this game, for my first attempt at this, this room went completely... Like, it was a complete clusterfuck for me. Because we have immediately two revenants and a blue ghost, the bastards. But as you can see, the shotgun makes very short work of the revenants. They die in like three shots from it, which is very useful to remember. The shotgun in this game is really powerful. And now we'll switch back to the actual assault rifle to take out the weapon, the blue ghosts because it fires much faster. But I had a lot of trouble with this uh, room when I first played through it because I just kept gang getting ganged up on all over the place. But there we go. You may recognise this aspect as being the room where Steel was being bothered by uh, Lord Hawksmoor, so... Let's try and find this to rescue her, while showing off the grenade's long distance ammo grabbing. Which is very useful for certain later levels. Steel. This fight's kind of a weird one because you expect it to be harder than it is because of the way these guys were bigged up in the opening cutscene. Uh, but one thing I kind of like with that cutscene is it basically gives you a tutorial on fighting these guys because the guy who's fighting them has trouble hitting this guy until the guy wheel moves his shield out of the way and he can actually start hurting him. So it's kind of like a little tutorial for this is what you'll be doing later. 
But yeah, this guy's fairly easy because you can hit him from behind with a grenade like that by banking it off the wall behind him, which is quite a cool trick. Now that's the biggest problem out of the way, now we can just get rid of these guys so just clustering up the sides of the room. Who are really very little threats unless they actually see you and start shooting at you, which doesn't really happen. This fight seems like it would be harder than it is. The Attic fight's the hardest fight in this uh, actual uh, level. These guys are kind of a joke because as you can see, they can just not notice you very easily. I quite like the effects in this game, it's like the grenade and everything like that. It's fairly distinctive, but also familiar to other franchises like Ghost Busters and things like that. And it even has like a similar noise to the traps that the Ghost Busters use. It's just got its own distinct tone to it. And like the big ball of energy thing that sucks them all in is kind of cool too. Now first, before we approach the monitor and continue the game, we're going to explore the array, which is kind of a gallery of all the enemies we've fought and captured so far. With a small description, and you can see them to get a little animation going, which is kind of cool. I like the array because it gives you a good chance to get a good look at the enemies, like the Hammer Knight, for example, who you barely see. I don't even think he even appears again, unless he only appears much later in the game, I can't remember. Same with the crossbow knights, but I quite like the design because I like the whole, like, the mask that's partially on and partially not kind of a thing that occasionally closes but for the most part is hanging open. It gives a good kind of creepy vibe to it, like an old uh, Buddhist statue kind of a thing. And then there's some more generic blue spooks. Now this scene coming up exemplifies why I love the AI as a character. You have returned. Please state your name. Lazarus Jones, Detroit PD, homicide. And you are? Information irrelevant. Okay, so much for the small talk. Civility, not a core objective. Accessing retort. I am digital. Get over it. Conversely, I severely regret all incoherence on my part and deletion of internal memory. Consequences of insufficient power. As to my primary functions, I am both guardian and guide. Guardian and guide of what? Guardian of the Array, guide to ghost hunters. The Array? The Array. It functions both as a prison for the creatures you capture and an energy source for many of my advanced functions. You may study the ghost through the viewing panel provided. Whoa, easy, Chief. You expect me to believe all this junk is powered by some kind of uh, spooky electricity? What you believe is of no consequence to me. What you do is all that matters, and what you have already done. What I've done is go on a routine patrol, get trapped in an abandoned school, and see my partner get snatched, okay? Is that all? Uh-huh. Apart from a bunch of Twilight Zone crap. No. What you have done, Officer Jones, is foolishly emptied the array, set loose a force of ghosts to roam free and wreak havoc as before. One spirit has fused with your corporal form, gifting you with sight beyond the living. Consequently, you can redress the chaos you have created. Your duty is to hunt down the ghosts. No, 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 pal. My duty is to find my partner. At last, a functioning Officer Jones. Ah, the woman steals. You have fought already. No doubt you acknowledge some strength opposing you. Some scar-faced worm boy. He is only part of what you are up against, and was torn from the array by your own hand, Officer Jones, but you are proving to be a most promising candidate. The creatures you have captured are already strengthening us. Over here, the spectral gateways. Your endeavors have activated one. I suggest you proceed through and continue your quest. Take this weapon and protective clothing. They will prove beneficial in the challenges ahead. Who the hell are you to tell me what to do? Your goddamn head in a box! I am guide to ghost hunters. Who am I to tell Officer Jones what to do? Valid. Only the professor has the answers. The professor? The, wait, wait up. The murderer? Professor Brooke? The murderer? Reference unrecognized. Professor Brooke, 
My creator has the answers. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. So where is the professor? No information. Could he be through here? A high probability. Right. But this gate will definitely take me to steel. Affirmative. Proceed now, please. Time is of the essence. Yeah, that's why I love the AI, because he puts his foot down when Lazarus tries to weasel out of things. I just love the way he says that, though. We're just like, no, you screwed this up. You will fix this. You have the tools and the power. You are basically a useful idiot. Get used to it. That is something I really like with the AI. He is willing to put his foot down when people are being unreasonable. He has a lot more personality than most AIs tend to have. That's something pretty cool. So, we are currently in the loading screen on the way to our second major level, the Swamp. Which will be the beginning of the next episode. For now we're just getting a little bit of a uh, look around. The Swamp's kind of a nice area, it's very colourful. A lot of muted browns and greens, but the contrast between the browns and greens helps a lot. So now let's save it at the Swamp Graveyard. And once we have saved it... I will see you in the next episode as we explore the graveyard and see what the swamp has to offer in terms of challenge, enemy types and locations. Goodbye. That's supposed to be double checking to make sure the actual thing has saved properly. So I'll see you next time.